When I walk through deep waters, I know that you will be with me. When I'm standing in the fire, I will not be overcome. I see your light is breaking through. The dark of night will not overtake me. I am pressing into you. Lord, you fight my every battle. strength, you're my defender, you're my refuge in the storm. Through these trials, you've always been faithful. You bring healing to my
Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ, the risen one. Did you feel the people tremble? Did you hear the singers roar? When the lost began to sing of Jesus Christ, the saving one. And we can see that God is moving a mighty river through the nations and young and old will turn to Jesus fling wide you heavenly gates prepare the way of the risen Lord open the doors and let the music play. Let the streets resound with singing. Songs that bring your hope and songs that bring your joy. Dancers who dance upon injustice do you feel the darkness tremble when all the saints join in one song and all the streams flow as one river to wash away our broken man Here we see that God is moving, a time of jubilee is coming, when young and old return to Jesus. Fling wide you heavenly gates, prepare the way of the risen Lord. upon injustice open up the doors and let the music play let the streets resound with singing songs that bring your hope and songs that Bring your joy, dancers who dance upon injustice. Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ, the risen one. I want to begin today by reading from Acts chapter 20, verse 35. The English Standard Version of the Bible says this, In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than receive. 
So I've entitled this message, Are You a Giver or a Taker? Um, see, we can live to give or we can um, set out to get. It, 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 all, it, it all comes down to our attitude. I don't think it's possible for us to be completely neutral on the issue. We will fall on one side of the fence or the other. So when it comes to being a giver or a taker, one of those things is going to be dominant over the other. We often do some of both, but we're still more of a giver or more of a taker. Unfortunately, there are those who are on the extremes of either one of those, and they really give or they really take. The extreme givers can um, uh, be taken advantage of, and extreme takers can be a burden to everyone around them. The idea of taking has almost been raised to a new level of as a right by some. In fact, today, uh, it seems taking has been elevated to that new level filled by enthusiastic grabbers. They don't see themselves as takers. They see themselves as entitled to whatever they want. In some cases, uh, they actually believe they are owed, and so it's their natural right to take what they want. Extreme givers don't seem to be a threat to anybody, unless, except to themselves, if they have no restraint and they simply give everything away. Extreme takers, however, can be viewed with suspicion and make people uncomfortable, as well as draining all the energy from those around them. I believe we're not locked into being a giver or a taker, uh, that with God's help, we can become people who are balanced. I think the overall weight of the Bible indicates that we should give rather than take. For some, that will require a change of perspective. For others, um, a transformation that would allow God to um, you know, work on us, or work through us. But for others, it means letting God strengthen an already natural tendency that you might have as a giver. We can choose to become givers or we can choose to remain takers. It is up to us. God wants us to become givers. How do I know that? Well, because God is the best giver of them all. He gave us breath, the breath of life in the very beginning. He continues to sustain the universe that we live in. Uh, he gave his only son um, as a way for us to return to him. He doesn't look for what he can take from us. God looks for what he can give to us. He asks us to receive what he gives and then he asks us to pass that on to others to continue to give like he gives. He, so he wants us to walk into a room and when we do so, not look around the crowd and say, what can I get from these people? But he wants us to say, um, what can I give to people in this room? He's a giver and he wants his children to follow in his footsteps. The statement that it is more uh, blessed to give than receive is true. Back to Acts 20, verse 35 then. In the second half of chapter 20 of the book of Acts, Paul is speaking to the leaders of the church of Ephesus. He's stopped by on his way to Jerusalem, and he's saying his final goodbye to them, saying that I, I don't think I'm going to be by this way again. I don't think that we're going to see one another again. And he takes time to remind them of how he behaved when he was with them. He spent all that time with them. He was never a burden from them. He didn't take from them. He looked to give rather than take, and he was encouraging them to do the same. So in verse 35, he claims to quote Jesus. He said, when Jesus said, the Lord Jesus, it is more blessed to give than receive. But there's a problem with that quote. You will not find that in any of the four Gospels. It leads us to wonder, uh, is this valid? Is this statement true? Did Paul make this up? Well, I don't think Paul made it up because he was not that type of person. And since it's in the Bible, we take it as being inspired and, and valid. So it is a true principle, regardless of whether it's an exact quote of Jesus or Paul is paraphrasing something or paraphrasing a concept that Jesus communicated on many occasions. So while the Bible doesn't record Jesus using those exact words, we know that he validates the concept in multiple places. So Paul, in his last um, contact with the leaders in the church of Ephesus, 
reminds them how he lived, how he served in humility. He didn't shrink away from declaring anything that would help them. Verses 18 to 21 of Acts chapter 20, he makes uh, several comments about his behavior. Um, and when they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and, t and tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public from house to house and going on about testifying. He wants them to follow his example of giving, 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 rather than taking, taking, taking. We need to be reminded of this today because today's world, we're told to grab whatever you can, whenever you can. If you don't think this is true, then I remind you of what happened in March and April of this year when we all were subject to the panic buying in fear. Hey, there's a limited supply of this or a limited supply of that. And everybody said, I want to get it. In fact, I can remember going to the grocery store with Joya and there was a guy who came out with a full cart of bread. He had bought most of the bread that the store had. And, I'm, you know, you're thinking that's a bit. That was a taker. That, that's who that person was. They, you know, we have stories of, of people taking stuff out of other people's shopping carts who, and because they wanted it. And, and like, man, those are takers. But a giver says, oh, look, there's one for me and one for you. Isn't that great? The, the attitude like that. So they wanted to make sure, takers wanted to make sure they got what they needed before someone else did. It was competitive shopping driven by fear. People's true nature became evident by their behavior as they took and took and took. That's not kingdom thinking. It's not kingdom living. Kingdom thinking by nature has us looking at what we can give rather than what we can take. Looking to give is way better to live than looking to what we can take or living in the entitlement attitude that we are owed. Um, and we can take what we want whenever we want. Jesus was in fact entitled because he was king. Everything was his anyway. He's king of all that he, he has. But he didn't come to take. He came to give. Jesus is the giver. He modeled giving for us, unlike the gods that were sort of his contemporaries. We know that they weren't real and we know that they were made up, but they were still, the concept of them was around in his day. So many of these false gods and many of these other religions that mankind has created um, have always made God to be taking from people. Um, for some reason, the people that have made up these gods have made them unhappy, have made them difficult to please, have made them, they require us to meet their needs. They don't look to give. Um, followers are forced to bring offerings, to buy their favor. They even, sac they even accept sacrifices, in some cases, human sacrifices. Uh, for some reason, these imagined gods have been made up and created in a way that they enjoy killing their followers. Not really a good recruitment strategy. I w wouldn't think so. And remember, these are all imaginary things. Oh, who, even though they don't exist, the people made them as takers. So even though they chose to give, there seems to be an arbitrary nature when these false gods gave. Um, they were the opposite. Jesus came along and said, I'm not like any of them. He gave. In fact, he gave in order to come in the first place. So Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 8, talk about something called the humiliation of Christ, the humiliation of Jesus, where we are told that he did nothing from selfish ambition, but being God, emptied himself, gave himself, taking on the form of a servant. He came and he gave his life. This was not, his coming was not a lateral move. He didn't just take on a new project at work. He is God the creator, the word. He is already ruling in heaven. He did not owe anybody anything. He had all authority in heaven and all authority on earth. There were no challengers to him at that time, and there still aren't. No one can take from him and no one needs to give to him because God has everything he needs in his own nature. He is awesome God who gave himself for us. 
He's without need, yet he voluntarily sets aside his divine attributes to become a man. To live as we live, to experience life as we experience life. He could have come as God and King with great ceremony and great great power. He could have come to take over the entire earth, and he will do that in the future. But instead, he came as a servant to give his life as a ransom for all who would accept his offer of forgiveness and make peace with God. He came to people who he knew would reject him, but he still came anyway. He came as a giver, not a taker. The Gospels are filled with stories of those who came to Jesus um, to take what he offered. Healing, deliverance, food, teaching, wisdom, correction, and so on. Jesus gave and gave and gave to them. He could take by force, but instead he gave by love. Jesus didn't demand that his followers bring him offerings. He, he didn't demand that they sacrifice the living to him. Instead, he gave himself for us. He became the sacrifice that would make peace with God possible. He gave when he didn't have to do so. He already had everything, and yet he gave. He could have wiped us out and started over with the new creatures who would have accepted him as God and followed him as he intended, but he came and he gave to us. What is most amazing is that he still gives today. In a world that tells him, get out. In a world that uses his name as an angry curse, he is still willing to give and give and give. In fact, when he left, he promised his disciples, I will give you the Holy Spirit. He promises us whatever we need for life and godliness, whatever we need to carry out our mission. He modeled giving, but for some reason, people still have this tendency to be takers. We even develop theologies that teach us taking is a good thing. But if we want to follow our king, we have to learn to give, not looking to get. Our whole culture is about getting. When you go to the store, you don't go to give something, you go to get. When you go to work, in some cases, jobs that people hate, we go to have the money so that we can get the stuff. We get and accumulate all our lives, and in the end, none of it matters. Even the church is affected by this. You have to have to ask yourself this question. Do you come to church to a service when, we're, when we return to being able to do that? To give? Or do you come to a church service to get? Do you walk in prepared to give encouragement, words of wisdom, guidance, love, pray for people, pray for healing, pray for deliverance? Do you look for people to give to? Or do you walk into the church to see what you can get out of that church, what you can take away from your time there? Over the years, I've heard people walk out of church service and say, yeah, I didn't really get anything out of that. And I go, well, I didn't want you to get anything out of that. I wanted you to give something to those around you. When Jesus was tired and grieving the loss of his cousin, John the Baptist, uh, he looked out and he saw a hungry crowd of people. And what did he do? He gave them food to eat. Follow the exa example Jesus gave. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 to 15, it records the story of Jesus sending out the 12. I know a few weeks ago I referred to Jesus sending out the 72, that version in Luke. Um, and he says some interesting things in verse 7 of chapter 10. He says this, And proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without paying, give without pay. Jesus is saying give. Give what you receive from me to those around you. Don't look for what you can take from those around you. This is quite different from the concept of the world we live in. He points out that they received without paying, so they should give without demanding something in return. He sent them out looking to give at no cost to the people who were in need. He told them not to accumulate the stuff of this world, but look for people that are willing to receive the kingdom of heaven and give to those people. 
The Bible cautions us against being greedy, looking to get instead of give. I think greed is the opposite of giving. Greed drives us to grab what we can hold on to um, instead of looking for what we can give. When a greedy person walks into a room, they are looking at what they can take from people in that room. And Jesus told his disciples, when you walk into a town, look to give what you have received freely from him. So don't be a greedy believer. When you walk into a church or a group of people, look around you to see who you can bless by giving prophecy or encouragement or wisdom and so on. Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. It will be put into your lap for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Giving needs to become a lifestyle. The last sentence of the verse reminds us that the measure you measure with is how you are going to be measured. So if you're a giver, the more you give, the more you will be given to give away. If you are a taker, you will always need to take because you will always be looking at what you can get out of that situation or how that will benefit you. It's that thinking that is anti-kingdom thinking. And it's so pervasive in our thought process, particularly those living in the United States. We have been raised to say, it's all about me. And when I go to a place, I want, I want to take from that what I want. I want to be that taker. In fact, we even come up with names of people uh, that we say this, this person is a representation of characteristics of people that do things like this. And we, 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 identify, we identify them. Be honest. Ask yourself, do you look to give or do you look to take? Do you say, what can this church do for me? Or do you say, how can I serve my king and his people? Jesus gave. He wants to flow through you so that all, everybody you encounter will see Jesus giving through you. We have to learn to look to give, to look to be the one that meets the need, to look to be the one that brings the word of encouragement, the word of hope, the, the, the word that will make a difference. And that, it's, it's a challenge, I think, that we need to embrace, particularly as the church going forward. We want to say, yeah, God has been wonderfully kind to me. I need to give what he's given me to those around me. So it's an interesting thought. Are you a giver or a taker? Jesus was the ultimate giver. And let's join him in that. Thank you, God, that you remind us of your character and your nature, Lord. Ask us, I ask you to help us become givers rather than takers. In Jesus' name, I trust that you will practice giving of encouragement and words of wisdom and, and words to strengthen people this week. And I, I, I just really ask, I trust God will bless you as the more you look to give in the model that Jesus gave. Have a great week. Seated above, enthroned in the Father's love. Destined to die, poured out for all now. God Spotless one, he never sinned, he suffered as if he did. All authority, every